Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Parks. I am a fluid artist from Enterprise, Alabama, and I wanted to welcome you to my channel, Poor Choices. Um, in this upcoming video, I'm doing a rainbow cloud pour, and I hope that you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Um, tonight, I wanted to show you um, how I do a cloud pour. So in a cloud pour, um, what you do is you use Actually, let me go grab the thing. It's Deco Art Satin Enamel Paint. And you mix about a quarter of it in compared to how much acrylic paint. Deco Art Pouring Medium. And I also use Floetrol in water and I mix it together in advance and then I pour them in with my colors. And then add the deco where it's at in the other one. I keep I keep the mixture in like a container like this so that I'm ready to pour it into my paints whenever I want to do a cloud pour. So I have a 16 by 20 canvas and I prepped it with blue painters tape and then I hammered in tacks on the corners. And this is a huge cardboard box that my husband spray painted and then we um, put a tarp down so I don't make a gigantic mess. I've also taken over his garage. So we are going to do, I'm gonna use this cup and then I'm gonna start off with a little bit of white and it is Master's Touch Titanium White. Move that in. And I'm going to do Master's Touch Thalo Blue. And next I'm going to do Artist's Loft Thalo Green. And I'm pouring it down the side of the cup and kind of pouring it up so that it'll... I'm trying to get it to sink. It's layering right now though. We'll see. We shall see. We're going to do the violet. So this is Liquitex Prism Violet, Liquitex Basics. Then I'm going to pour in some Master's Touch Permanent Red. There you go, that one was sinking. We have some Master's Touch Orange. Where did that one sink too? That's cool. And then we have Master's Touch Lemon Yellow. And then after the yellow, I'm going to do a little bit more white on top. But not much. Just a little bit. And then I'm going to take my titanium white and I'm going to kind of pour it all around the sides of the canvas to help my paint flow once I put it on here. When I tell y'all that it takes like a flipping ton of paint to do one of these, I ain't lying. We're going to be messy with it and just kind of spread it with my hand. I'm wearing gloves because takes forever for me to scrub the acrylic paint off my hands whenever I just get too excited and I don't throw gloves on. And every time, I regret it. So, today we're wearing gloves. Sometimes I use like a popsicle stick to do this part, but we're gonna have fun. Paint is self-leveling most of the time anyways, so like the acrylic paints that I use are Mm -hmm. Kind of get it even. And I'm also letting the paint sit in the cup and kind of like hang out with one another. And I feel like there's a lot of white in that cup, but we're going to see. 
All right, so this is what the inside of my cup looks like. And I'm just gonna start pouring. One really important thing to remember is to always make sure that your canvas is as level as humanly possible. Because if not, your paint will start pouring right off of your freaking canvas and then you'll lose a ton of it. I have got to get a window unit in this garage. I'm waiting on... Okay, as you can see, there's already cells that are forming in some of the colors. Just kind of giving it a second to let it hang out and do what it wants to do. I might do a little bit of blue on the side. This will help it move around. So right now I have a little micro torch that I got from Harbor Freight, super cheap, butane in here. Eventually I'm gonna get a more heavy duty one, but this kind of helps, um, one, pop air bubbles, and two, it helps your cells form. So I'm gonna kinda go over it. You can still see like all the little cells coming up without me doing anything. We're gonna see. This thing likes to not stay lit. Hint, hint, my birthday's in June. This thing is terrible. And then once it starts going, it'll, it'll be all right for me, but. You wanna go, you don't wanna stay in one spot for very long, you're gonna bake your paint. You don't want to bake your paint. You want it to be able to move fluidly. So, kind of let it hang out. Now I think I'm gonna see what we can get. You always wanna feel the weight of your paint and just kind of go around in a circle so that you don't lose any of what you got. You have to be very patient and go slowly. Kind of bring it back to the middle. Make sure that your weight stays kind of centered. I really like what's going on in the middle with the yellow and the red and the purple. I don't want to lose that. Hopefully I can stretch it out a little bit. to pour some off the corner. And bring it back to the center. Oh, that green is really pretty. I don't know if I'm liking what's going on around the yellow and the orange. I might pour one of that off. Don't know if I'm a fan. I think what I'm gonna start doing too is like putting canvases under the canvas that I'm pouring on so that I can catch some of the paint. Yeah, I think I don't like that. Okay. I'm gonna stop because I see a couple. I might have to do that when I take my glove off because that's not what I wanted to happen. Yay. There's lumps in my paint. It almost reminds me so far of like a trilobite in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna go in this way. 
Come on, paint. See if I can get a little more paint out to help this flow. Because it kind of wants to hang on sometimes. Let's see if that helps. There we go. I'm going to put it back. Just moving the canvas around to get the paint to go where I want it to go. Look at all the cells that have formed. I haven't even touched it again with the with the blow torch. But what I am going to do right now is one lean into some paint because that's what I do. And two, I'm going to touch where I see some lumps and try to get them out because homie don't play that. I don't like lumps. So now, let me grab another glove real quick. I just want to kind of move the canvas around a little bit to make that paint look a little more natural where I had to take the lumps out. Dude. So many beautiful cells. Kind of reminds me of like outer space. Let me see if this will kind of pour off a little bit. Did not like that spot, y'all. And you can see as I'm moving it, there's still more and more cells that are popping up. And it looks like a cloud in the middle. I kind of wish that there was more color in the middle instead of all the white. Next time, I probably won't do the white on top again. I think it was too much. But we're going to hit it with, a heat, with the uh, flow torch and see what happens. And then we're going to be done because I don't want to faint. I don't like that, but I don't want that to pour off because I like that. It looks like a watermelon. I can't get some colors to pop up here, maybe. But you just keep it going and this helps pop air bubbles. This helps create cells. Heat is important. All right, I'm gonna let that keep developing, I think. And um, let me see if I can fix this little corner right here where my glove touched it. This is how my hands get dirty because I'm like, oh, I'll just do one more little thing. Do I put gloves back on? No, I don't. I don't. All right. Well, I think that I'm done for now. I'm going to see how it keeps developing. And then I will come back with an update on how it dries. Because a lot of times your paints can, like this can continue developing cells. So it could look different in even 20 minutes. So I will come back um, with a picture of it at the end. Thank you all so much for watching my second video and 
please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel and I, I appreciate so much um, all of your support and your love and I'm so excited for this journey. You have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. Hey, so I wanted to show everybody what the painting looked like whenever it dried. So here it is. Um, kind of point out some of the things that I like and some of the things that I am still kind of observing and um, we'll just start down here. Um, a lot of these colors kind of got muddied together, so I'm like, oh, I'm still kind of trying to decide if I like that, but I'm absolutely loving all the cell action that I have all around right here. I like that the orange is coming through right here with the greens and the blues. Um, so in, in the video I talked about how I was trying to get do a cloud pour, and what that means is like this kind of effect right here. And there's some right here too, but you can see it really well in the white and the blue. So when you add the Deco Art Satin Enamel paint to your acrylic paint, um, then you can get this kind of effect, which I think is really, really cool. Um, and I'm actually going to do another cloud pour in my next video, so we're going to see if we can get it to look any different. Um, I'm, I'm kind of not a fan of all this white. I shouldn't have added the second layer of white, I don't think. Um, but I also wanted to show that because it's so hot in Alabama right now, it is 100 degrees in Alabama, and all of my paintings, um, all of my paintings sit in the garage to dry, and it's been so hot that they're baking. So you can see that when that happens, your paints will start to get like pitted, sort of. Um, so my husband Travis, thank you, Travis, just ordered me another shelf so that I can start drying all of my paintings inside, which I'm going to be super grateful for because then that kind of stuff won't happen. Um, I like that this looks like a watermelon up here, and I don't know if you remember, but there was a few lumps in my paint, and that's where I got one of them out, so it kind of looks like a constellation, but I don't know. I'm still kind of looking at it and trying to decide if I like it or if I want to pour over it or what, because um, there's some cool stuff happening, and then there's some other stuff that I'm like, eh, about, but there's the first painting, and um, my next video, I'm going to do another one, so I hope that you comment if you have any questions. Um, then ask them down in the comment section. Please follow and like my page and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Bye.